How much would you pay me for a dollar? Now, at first glance, that might sound like a preposterous question, but when you dive down deeper, you're really answering the question of fundamental analysis. It's how to determine the value of something. Because if I ask you, hey, how much would you pay me for a dollar? Your questions should be in response. When will I get the dollar? What is the likelihood that I will get that dollar? Will I get that dollar more than once over a period of time? Do I get that dollar immediately plus interest? What is is the likelihood that th that dollar will stick around? There are tons of questions about this. Now, again, it might sound ridiculous asking how much you'd pay for a dollar, but if I asked you how much would you pay for 10 ounces of silver, well, suddenly that question doesn't sound as ridiculous because if you've ever bought silver, the prices for 10 ounces or one ounce of silver can vary and go all over the map. Right now, the spot price of silver is about $18, but this one ounce coin of silver costs about $35, but this 10 ounce brick of silver only costs about $25. So if I ask you how much would you pay for something, the answer is not exactly clear. And to arrive at the correct answer, you have to do a little bit of fundamental analysis to understand the question, how much are you paying for? How much is something worth? What is the value that you are buying? And so in this video we are going to look at the proper way to buy silver right now because premiums are so ridiculous and how you can accumulate more silver over time without actually having to pay more money just by playing the premiums and a sneak peek at how to buy silver below the current spot price. Ready? Let's dive in. As I'm sure you're aware, if you've ever bought silver, premiums for silver right now are off the charts, depending on the type of silver you're buying. So we're gonna look at a strategy you can use to accumulate more silver over time without ever having to spend more money on that silver just by playing the premium games. And then after that, we're going to look at a company, sponsor of today's video, Silver Mountain Resources, that you can use to buy silver at an extreme discount to spot. So first take a look with with me here, we're just looking at appmex.com and we can see this is a typical American Eagle. This is one of, if not the most popular one ounce silver coin in the world. And you can see right now it's listed at 3280, but depending on how you pay for it, you might be paying all the way up to $36 and 25 cents for one ounce of silver. This is a terrible deal considering that silver's spot price right now is at 1850. So you're buying that one ounce of silver at $5 higher than the peak of the silver price in 2020 and 2021. Now we know that you can't actually buy physical silver at spot simply because spot price is like, that's the base price. And so if you wanna get silver in your own hands, you have to pay for that silver to be melted down, for it to be refined, for it to be put into the little mold to create the coin, for it to be verified and then shipped and then stored and then shipped again. There's a lot of cost that goes into making this nice little shiny coin. But there is a much better way to do it, especially right now. Take a look at this 10 ounce silver bar. This one is just an ugly hunk of silver from Pioneer Metals and it's a 10 ounce bar. And so you can get it as low as $22.49. 3280, 2250. That's $10 difference per ounce of silver. And considering the spot price is a little over $18 right now, $10 is crazy. It's important to recognize that the spot price compared to premiums on things like American Eagles, it's not always this crazy. During times of low silver demand, the premiums on coins disappear. Not completely, but they're nowhere near 10 to $15 like we see today. So here's the strategy. Right now, if you have American Eagles, you go to a company, whether it's Atmex or somebody else, and you sell them your silver. The reason why premiums are so high is because everybody wants these right now. But guess what? This has the exact same molecular structure as this. 
it's the same metal. And so for some reason, everybody wants these right now when you can get this for much cheaper. So you take this that you already have, your American Eagles, and you contact a few companies and you say, hey, I've got a hundred silver eagles or however many you have. I will sell them to you. How much will you give me? Now, you're not going to get the entire $32 because that dealer has to make a profit to buy them from you. But you're going to get a heck of a lot more than what you would spend on those ugly hunks like these ones from Pioneer Metals, which means that if you sell your ounces that are Silver Eagles, you can buy more ounces of the ugly stuff and you didn't have to spend any money. You increased your ounces of silver with no outspend. And yes, I'm pretty sure I just made that word up. Now, here's the best part. When premiums come back down, because they always do, whether it's one year, two years, three years or more, at some point, those premiums will come back down and these Silver Eagles won't be selling for 10 to 15 bucks over spot anymore. They'll be selling for two, three dollars over spot. And guess what? At that point, you call up those same silver dealers and you say, hey, I've got some ugly silver. I want to send it in and trade it in for some American Eagles. Now, you do this enough times, you go back and forth playing the premiums, you increase the number of ounces of silver you have without ever having to spend additional dollars on it. Now, you might be thinking, wait, 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 wait. When you go from the ugly hunks, to the American Eagles, you are going to be spending money, right? Because you are going from something that's cheaper to more expensive. That's if you keep the same number of ounces. So let's say you go from uh, you have 100 ounces of the Silver Eagles and you're able to trade it out for 110 ounces of the ugly stuff. Well, then when you go back to the pretty stuff from the ugly stuff, maybe now you can only get 109 ounces or 108 ounces. So when you go back, you get less ounces. But as you play the premium game, as premiums go up, you exchange it for the ugly stuff as premiums go down you give back the ugly stuff and get the good looking stuff over time you accumulate on net a lot more silver but there's an even better way to get silver where you can buy it in the ground at way 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 lower than the current cost of silver we're going to be looking at this company silver mountain resources and we are going to again have to ask the question how much would you pay for a dollar this is the question of valuation this is fundamental analysis how to determine whether a company is cheap or expensive what is the likelihood that you're going to get your dollar back and how many dollars will you get back first of all this company has a market cap of just under 30 million dollars so number one, this is a tiny company, only $30 million for its market cap. Very small. However, this is a pure silver play and most silver mines are not pure silver plays. Silver is mostly mined as a byproduct of things like copper. This is a pure silver play and most other companies that are pure silver plays are worth at least 10 times more. But it gets better because you have to ask why is the market valuing it at $30 million? Well, first of all, they have just about $17 million in cash, which means that of the $30 million of its current market cap, 17 million is cash. That means the asset, the resource in the ground is currently valued at about $13 million. This is the Reliquious Mine, which is a past producing silver mine mine here in Peru. So this mine used to be in production. And so one of the hurdles that you get when you look at a mine is, hey, is this actually going to ever produce? And so you have a much higher likelihood of that happening if it was past producing because it had the infrastructure and the things that it needed to produce in the past. But there's another hurdle where you have to ask, well, what is it going to cost to get this thing up and running again? Because there are costs associated with that. Well, the good news is it's already fully permitted and the cost is just about 17 million dollars, which is why they have that cash. Now that's a net cash position, which means they are a debt free company. They own this asset 100 percent and it's got a lot of silver, as we're going to take a look at right now. Not only does it have the 37 million ounces of silver, but when you look at the amount of zinc, lead and copper that it has as well, it has a e silver equivalent asset size of 80 million ounces of silver. So let's do some math. First, let's look at the 37 million ounces of silver. We know that minus the cash, the market is valuing this company at about $13 million. Given the fact that they've got 37 million ounces of silver, that values this asset at about 35 cents an ounce 
for the silver that's in the ground. The industry standard for most silver mines that have silver in the ground is about $2.80 for the silver that they have in the ground. So given the $13 million valuation on the company paired with just the silver they know they have in the ground, if you'd valued it like other silver companies are valued, that would give this company an 8x upside. But like I said, this mine also has zinc and lead and copper, giving it a silver equivalent ounces of 80 million. $13 million market cap divided by 80 million ounces of their silver equivalent assets means that it is being valued at 16 cents per ounce. Valuing this company like other companies then in the same space gives it a 24x upside. Because of this, investors like Franklin Templeton, who rarely come in pre-IPO, but they did on this company, and Merck and Eric Sprott, his personal money, plus Sprott the company, and other insiders and institutions, leaves only 26% of the shares available for retail. So a bit of caution here, small company, very few shares available, this company, this stock can move extremely quickly. This means that somebody with just a few hundred thousand dollars can come in and buy up 1% of the company. So be cautious, the shares can move and be extremely volatile if you're going to play with this. So back to my original question, how much would you pay for $1? This is the fundamental question of fundamental analysis and with a company like Silver Mountain Resources, it looks like this might be an opportunity to buy a dollar for just a few pennies. As always, I really appreciate you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day.